the question we have asked so many people and searched again and again on Google and YouTube. But why even after watching several tutorial videos and reading blogs, why do we still have this question in mind? Three reasons. One, you haven't found the right video or blog. Two, yes, they've told me to learn these things, but where do I learn them? What resources I can make use of? Three, you're not consistent. So let's put a full stuff to this question. Before making this video, I've done some deep research on data engineering job description to understand what skills a companies are expecting from entry level one plus two plus year candidates. After analyzing the result, I understood one thing. Hadoop, Hive, Spark, SQL, and anyone programming language are not enough even for entry level candidates. You need to know more because companies are expecting more from us. By the end of this video, you will get to know about everything, what skills you need to learn, what projects you can do, what are the resources you can use, and how many days you can spend on each topic. These will address the first two reasons. To tackle the third reason, I've got something for you that I'll be sharing by the end of this video. You know, that will help you to be consistent and keep track your learning journey. If you follow the schedule and resources which I'm gonna share in this video, definitely I can assure you that by the end of the third month, you would have acquired a good amount of skill you needed to become a data engineer. By the way guys, before uh, getting into the video, I, I just want to share you one thing. You don't have to pause the video and take note of every single resource. Um, which I'm going to share in a moment. I'll let you know at the end how you can access the free resources. You just sit back and watch the whole video. So you ready? Let's get started. Day one and two basics. If you're a complete beginner, I recommend watching this video. Even if you are aware of what is data engineering, why big data came into picture, it's okay to give it a watch, you know, you'll get a clearer understanding. Alternatively, if you prefer reading, you can go to Google and type what is data engineering or what is big data, open few articles and start understanding the basics. While watching the videos or reading blogs, you may see some suggestions uh, that is related to data engineering concepts like Hadoop or Hive or, you know, how to become a data engineer. Please don't jump around, just stick with the schedule. For first two days, focus only on basics. Day 3 to 12, programming. For the first 10 days, pick any one programming language from the following. Either it could be Java, Python, Scala or R. I recommend choosing Python or Scala. So for example, if you have picked Python, then first cover the basics. What is data types, list, tuples, set, dictionary and loops, conditions, functions, what are all the built-in functions. You can learn it from W3 schools or if you prefer watching video, you can watch this video or this video. And then move on to libraries for data engineering, NumPy and Pandas are more than enough. I learned NumPy and Pandas only using W3 school. If you get comfortable using W3 school, you don't actually need any other resource. W3 school is just amazing. You may have this doubt. Do you have to learn OOPS concept? Well, I would say yes, you have to learn OOPS concepts uh, such as what they are, what is inheritance, types of inheritance, polymorphism, what is class, what is objects, but you don't have to master them. The same applies to NumPy and Pandas because there are so many functions in both. You can go through everything, but you don't have to remember every single function. Just practice the commonly used functions. That level of understanding is more than enough. Most important thing, every day, spend an hour or more if you need it for practicing coding. If you want to be good at coding, the only thing you have to do is practice, practice, practice. That's the only solution. You don't have any other options. For practicing Python, you can use HackerRank, LeadCode or CodeChef. If you're a complete beginner, I recommend starting off with hacker rank. Day 13 to 22. So now we are entering into the SQL world. First cover DBMS concept like what is DBMS, what is RDBMS, types of keys, acid properties, what is normalization. Then you can learn about SQL commands, DML, DDL, DCL, TCL, aggregate functions, subqueries, common table expression. 
And the most important thing is window function. Please don't just skip window function. Initially, you may feel a bit difficult to understand the concept, but window function is actually super easy. If you know how to use window function, then it'll be easier for you to solve certain problems. So after learning, you will get to know why I'm saying this. And guys, I bet you, you'll get at least one question on window function in your interview. You can learn SQL and DBMS from Java Tpaint and W3 School. Also, don't forget to check out this YouTube channel, Tech TFQ. In his channel, you can find loads of good SQL content. So don't forget to check out this YouTube channel. You can practice SQL on lead code or hacker rank. Guys, please don't underestimate the power of SQL. When it comes to data engineering, you have to be 90% strong in SQL because it's extremely important. So practice every day to become strong in SQL. Day 23 to 26, Linux. Learn some basic concepts in Linux. You don't have to dive deeper in Linux. Focus more on commonly used commands. You can learn from by watching this video or Geeks for Geeks. Day 27 to 30. Now we are entering into the data world. For the next four days, learn about data warehousing concept. What is data warehousing? What is the difference between data lake and data warehouse? OLAP, OLTP, Star Schema, Snowflake Schema. You can learn by watching these videos. Day 31 and 32 ETL process. ETL is nothing but extract, transform and load. Extracting data from some particular location and doing some transformation that is completely based on business use case and then loading the data to some other location. You can learn about ETL and how ETL works, uh, what is pipeline everything by watching these videos. Day 33 to 40, Apache Hadoop. In Hadoop, you have to focus on Hadoop architecture, HDFS architecture, how data is stored in HDFS, what are the HDFS commands. Cover these concepts in detail. For MapReduce, just understand what is MapReduce and why it was used. Because these days, no one uses MapReduce. It has been replaced by Spark. You can learn completely about Hadoop by watching this playlist. Day 41 to 44, Hive. In Hive, learn these things. Why Hive is used, uh, Hive commands, types of partition, internal and external table, and how to create internal and external table. What is the main difference between those? Use this playlist to learn about Hive. Also, if you want, you can refer in Java Depoint, but that playlist is more than enough. Day 45 to 55, Apache Spark. In Spark, learn these things. Uh, what is Spark? why it is used, what is the difference between MapReduce and Spark, what is batch processing and stream processing, RDD data frame and data set. Focus more on data frame, uh, how to read and write data, what are the different options you have while reading and writing data. Explore all the functions available in Spark, but you don't have to remember everything, just understand, go through everything and understand and practice the commonly used ones. When learning Spark, you may encounter these two things. One is PySpark, another one is ScalaSpark. PySpark is nothing but writing Spark code in Python and ScalaSpark writing Spark code in Scala. There is also Spark SQL, which allows to write SQL queries inside Spark. You can choose either ScalaSpark or PySpark. That's, that's completely up to you. If you are a Java person, then you can choose ScalaSpark because Scala and Java are kind of similar. Also, it is even more easier than Java. So it's completely up to you guys. You can prefer whichever you want. If you're learning PySpark, FreeCodeCamp has this amazing tutorial. So you can make use of it. And one more thing, my most favorite website, uh, Spark by Example, there you can find everything, like literally everything you can learn uh, about Spark there. RDD, data frame, data set, and Spark SQL. And the beauty is you will have the example for every single thing. After finishing Spark, SQL, Hadoop, Hive, anyone programming language, you can pat your shoulder and congrats yourself because now we have completed the mandatory skills required to become a data engineer. But we are not stopping here. There are more to explore. So it's time to level up our skills. Learn the basics of Airflow. What is Airflow? What is DAG? How to create DAG? And what are the trigger rules available in Airflow? And what is a dependencies? Different types of operators in Airflow. You can learn about Airflow from DataCamp or Airflow official documentation. 
or from this medium blog post day 62 to 71 now it's time to dive into cloud platforms pick anyone from aws azure or gcp and start learning you don't need to get deep into cloud just understand the basics uh, how data is stored in cloud what are the different services available for data engineering i learned about azure but if you ask me i recommend choosing either aws or azure because when I was digging the job description, the most repeated ones was Azure and AWS. So it would be better if you choose anyone from this. You can learn Azure from their official documentation and also from this YouTube channel. On his channel, you can find everything related to Azure. For AWS, you can refer K to an academy. Now we have completed 50% of our journey. What? Just 50? I thought it would be... 80 or 90 percent that's what you're thinking right think for a moment guys so far we have learned about everything but we haven't implemented our learning right so it's time to get our hands dirty do as many projects you want to get deeper and clearer understanding but i recommend doing two projects at least two projects one using Airflow, another one using Cloud. You can refer Dashil Burma's YouTube channel. Uh, he uploaded a lot of project related videos or this playlist or this GitHub repo. And guys, please don't just copy everything from the project. Understand the architecture, understand where the data is read and stored, how to process the data, what are the different services they are using. Try to use different data set. You can freely download it from Kaggle. Also use different use case and if you have no idea about which use case to use. Why you have to worry when a friend is here, right? Uh, you can ask chat GPT. Definitely it will give you some good suggestions. You may have this doubt. Uh, let's take the video, the project video uh, I've shared is uh, for example, six hours. Let's take for example, six hours. You may have this doubt. You know, the video is only for six hours. I can just complete it within two or three days. Why I have to spend 15 plus days? Guys, are we doing projects just to complete them and tell everyone that hey i've completed this project and adding it in your resume that's not the whole point right please keep this in mind we want to do projects to get hands-on experience and deeper understanding that's the reason we are doing projects and that's why i've allocated 15 plus days only for projects you get a chance to explore more and understand more when you're doing projects than learning once you've done your project you can push your project to github okay so let's be honest how many of you have linkedin account if yes good if not no problem go ahead and create one after watching this video regularly post in linkedin before posting please keep this two points in mind one your post should add a value to someone two your post should attract hr's attention please don't um, share everything before learning like for example i'm gonna learn this or i'm gonna learn that i'm gonna learn sql or python uh, in linkedin instead you can share after learning like let's take for example if you have learned today about um, SQL and you learn about aggregate functions so you can share in LinkedIn like what is aggregate function what are the types of aggregate function along with an example that will be good so let me answer this frequently asked question should I have to learn DSA to become data engineer I would say no unless you are aiming for any product based companies because DSA is not a mandatory skill you need to acquire to become a data engineer but if you're interested, you can learn after watching everything, after covering everything which I've shared before. So, as I said, I've got something for you to stay consistent and track your learning journey. I've created a Google Doc, like a goal tracker, in that I've attached all the resources and the time frame you need to spend on each topic. After finishing each topic, you can mark it as done, or if you just started, you can mark it as in progress. This will really help you whenever you open this doc to learn. You can clearly see where you are and where you want to go. Before wrapping this video, I just want to add few more points. In the middle of the journey, you feel like you don't understand anything, which can make you doubt yourself and you will have this negative thoughts uh, popping up in your mind. You know, it's okay. It's completely okay to feel that way. You'll understand everything as you progress. If you think like you can't do this or I can't do that, it's only you're limiting yourself. If you think you can, you can do it. 
if you think you can't you can't do it so all the best guys you've got this that's all for today guys i hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you found this video helpful you know what to do and by the way uh, if you want to know about my complete journey for how i became a data engineer as a fresher and also what are the techniques i've used to uh, approach hrs and uh, how i actually got a job everything i've shared uh, everything i've uh, mentioned in this video um, you can check out this video if you want um, so yeah uh, i'll catch you next time have a great day uh, take care bye bye